If you look back at the development in China over the last 30 years, it has been very much driven by government spending on infrastructure and the overall industrialization. It is one of the biggest industrialization that we have seen in mankind for a long, long time. It has also helped to lift up 400 million people above the poverty line. So it's definitely helped the quality of a lifestyle in China. We do not look at uh, uh, sector when it comes to deciding whether to, to invest or deciding whether to go into any sector to look for candidates. In fact, we do it the other way around. We look at companies from all sectors, uh, you can say all walks of life, and trying to find the companies uh, in each sector. However, right now, I think we still find um, that there are certain hurdles to, to, to finding uh, good companies. For example, the banking sector is still a very difficult one. Uh, given the interference by the government policies. So we end up with a portfolio that's much more skewed towards the consumption, much towards the uh, domestic consumption uh, uh, theme. Uh, so you'll find a number of consumer names. Um, and one way of playing consumption is also not just through retail, uh, invest, uh, retail uh, 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 companies. It could be through uh, companies that are indirectly exposed to domestic consumption. And one example will be uh, shopping mall operators and we do have a few of them in the portfolio where they will house a number of uh, retailers in their shopping mall. So this is another way that we play domestic consumption. We still find the quality of the Hong Kong companies to be much higher than those uh, on the mainland uh, China. The covenant standard is higher because these companies have been around for a much longer time. Uh, they do take care of minority shareholders and the regulator also plays a big part um, because they have strict regulation on the way that the businesses are run for all shareholders. At the same time, a lot of these Hong Kong companies will have exposure to mainland China as well. Um, they do not just rely on Hong Kong businesses nowadays, uh, given the majority of the economy in Hong Kong. As with all emerging markets, uh, China will face its uh, growth bounds uh, along the ways. What we see right now on a macroeconomic front is a potential risk with uh, shadow banking which has proliferated over the last two or three years. But the biggest risk uh, when it comes to investing in China is still on uh, the individual companies. Companies are still pretty young in terms of the way that they run their businesses for all shareholders. Companies are not mature enough in the way that they treat minority shareholders. And as a result of a very low governance standard, um, due diligence is even much more important than, say, many other markets in the region. At Aberdeen, our investment process emphasizes a lot on investing in quality companies and we're trying to buy them as cheap as possible. Uh, last year alone, we did about 500 company visits. And from these company visits, we try to screen out the bad companies from the good ones. As a result, we try to have a very concentrated portfolio with just uh, 30 to 40 names and these are the companies that we feel are of the highest quality. Uh, at the end of the day, we are trying to protect uh, investors from, uh, uh, from badly run companies because this is what we feel uh, is the highest risk when it comes to investing in China.